And we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the closing show. This shit right here is staying right here all year. But this shouldn't be stressful at all. That's when I'm under just because you were giving Jeans, private stock lead, but it's let's go. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back once again to The Closer Show. My name is Liam Benson. I will be your host tonight and The Closer. I know we've had on so many big guests that I just haven't had my spot to come in and show you guys what I can do. You guys think I'm just excellent at hosting, and I get a lot of nice comments about it, but you guys don't know how well I can close. So tonight, it's going to be all me. We've got some excellent guests on who are just going to be giving their two cents, their input, whatever you want to call it. And I know I look more pale than usual, right? I'm a redhead. I am pale. I broke my camera. Yep. So this is currently being filmed off of my laptop camera, which it's not horrible, but it's certainly not great. So for those of you guys, I apologize that your viewing pleasure is not exactly what we want it to be. But you know what? That's okay. For those of you guys listening, I hope my voice sounds excellent as always. And for those of you guys listening back after the fact, you guys are the best, right? If you are listening back and you're not here live, no worries. You are valued just as highly. But what's just as important is make sure that you share our content with others. We're providing so much free value to you guys right now, now and forever, right? You guys just got to be sharing and get everybody tuned into here because the more people here, the more people on Speed to Lead, the more leads we generate, the more money in your guys' pockets. And everybody likes money in their pockets. But without further ado, I'm going to introduce our two guests for today. Just some people are going to be chilling, hanging out, giving their two cents, comments, concerns, questions, whatever you want to call it. But we've got the one and only, of course, the man, the myth, the legend. We got Gene Blinkoff. What's up, Gene? What's up, man? And he didn't realize he was you're muted. <laughs> That's what's going on, everybody. Liam, good to see you, brother. Hey, man. It really destroyed your momentum right there. I said you came in, you were pointing, you were getting hyped up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm all about I'm all about getting my momentum back. So we get there. We go. <laughs> so, and speaking of momentum, our guest today is big on social media, and he knows so much about marketing. I mean, the dude is just smart. We were sitting here just shooting the shit for. I mean, the time went by quick. We meant to start about half an hour ago, but we just got to talking. This guy knows so much about so many different things. I mean, he knows crypto, marketing, real estate, all the stuff, the whole nine yards. Yeah, wholesaling. So let's bring him. We got Stratton Brown. What's up, Strat? Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, of course. And of course, if you guys don't know, right there, the at right there, that's his Instagram. Go give him a follow. Go see what he's about. You guys can see all this stuff. He's got a phone number. You can text him on, get information straight <laughs> from the source. So uh, make sure you get that filled in, yeah. too. Thank you, bro. Dude, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your businesses, what you got going on. I mean, you're clearly an interesting guy. We just got to hear it straight from the source. Um, my name is Stratton Brown. I own a couple of different companies. We have our wholesaling company, and then we have our call magician staffing company. That helps real estate investors grow their business through a couple different ways, whether it be through data management, lead management, or cold calling or texting. And then we have our social media company, Clockwork Media, and that helps other people grow their social media in a couple different ways. What else? Those are the three biggest ones. And then obviously, buy and hold real estate. The staffing company, man. That's um, that's 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 incre that's incredible. Yeah, how? We're managing a bunch of customers. We have like 4,000 customers speed to lead. Most people trying to do all that staffing on, on their own. Yes. That's insane to me because most Who people not suck, how? At, suck at HR. Dude, not yeah. only do they suck at HR, but like the data management side of things, we know for a fact that our clients who are going through and they're tracking their numbers down to a T. Yesterday in the Nick Perry Seven Figure Cartel, we saw a, it's such an amazing post. It was a uh, it was a breakdown of them using our PPC management, and that is the exact type of person who's going to make it so successful because they're tracking their numbers closely. They they can you know estimate how many leads it takes to get to a contract, what the average cost per contract is, what the average assignment is, and they really take it out of you know oh guys I just got a fifty thousand assignment or I got this, and it takes it away from getting your next big win, and it turns it into a different paradigm of. 
I can predictably spend 5,000 in marketing and make $50,000, right? You're making these right. you know, 10 to one ROIs and you can turn it into a predictable business model and it completely changes things. I mean, massively. Well, what I like with PPC is you can, because with cold calling, the generally the timelines are really unpredictable, right? And like I own a company that cold calls. With PPC, it should be right away. And so your cash conversion cycle is a lot faster. And then you can truly like dial it in and scale to where, okay, we can scale this model really, really fast. Cause I know if I spend 5,000, I make 25,000, my cash conversion cycle is 20 days. Right. And then at that point, and uh, bro, you can just keep spending the money and it works. To with cold calling, you're going to get someone. We've had people who we close in two years, a year and a half, a year. I mean, the same thing happens with PPC, but if someone fucking Googles, I need to sell my house fast. And your <laughs> ad pops up. Those motherfuckers are selling. Too true. Too true right there. I think. Um, and uh, for, for, those, in. for those of you who are tun tuning in, uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to spend some time here on the live with, with Stratton. Um, and um, as, as the folks are rolling in here, Strand is like somebody that I just like, there's certain people that I can see. They're not even, they're not even the most, uh, uh, maybe like flashy, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the typical like uh, guru style. Uh, but like, you can see a certain, certain aura about people. Um, and Strand, this, this guy, this guy just understands so much about business. Uh, that that I'm excited to uh, to spend some time with Stratton in Utah because uh, uh, Stratton is having a mastermind uh, in Utah, uh, and I like I like I love how how just how tight knit you know it's uh, it's it's going to be. Uh, I actually get to speak there and uh, talk to talk to folks and share share kind of a very intimate approach to to how I manage our companies and, and, and our, our, you know, streams of leads, uh, and, and how to generate them. But, uh, just super excited to, to, to spend some time with you, Sean. Um, got a lot of respect for you, man. Hell yeah. Well, thank you so much for the compliment. I love you're the, you're the best Facebook marketer. I know <laughs> you, you've you. destroyed with I speed delete with what you guys do here. And then you're in every group and like, it's very intentional, right. To where like I have, um, I have some mentees and I had one mentee who was like, well, how do I, he wanted to do JVs and he wanted to do like the Kegley model. And mm -hmm. I was like, look at what Gene has done. Look what I've done. Look what Scott's done. And I can name like several people. I was like, if you just get active on Facebook, it's going to work. I like, get active, engage. You will get clients. I don't care what it is. Like just be a little bit loud and you don't have to be douchebaggy loud. But if you actually bring value, talk about what you're doing, but you're going to get clients. That's all it is. Yeah. You just got to have one thing cool thing that's valuable i practiced it so many times uh i i used to just post and, and it used to be a little better with facebook but i would just put something i would spend like a day on a lead magnet and i love doing it like you spend a day on a lead magnet do something difficult that's a pain in the ass for people some kind of research something yeah I, one one time i think i went and did like um I just get excited. You you give me a compliment, and I get so excited about this shit. So I gotta I gotta I gotta say, I gotta say an example. But like I put I went in the as soon as Facebook announced that you can like spy on other people's ads and actually like see what other people's ads look like. What the ad library? Ads look like. Yeah. So like yeah. I went and freaking I was like, dude, I'm a, I'm gonna go and see what other every like popular big wholesaler like uh, home investors and all them and express home buyers like all the all. Everyone who I thought was a celebrity uh, at the time. And I went and like spied on their ads. I put together a little, I put it all together in one PDF. And I went to groups. I went into groups. I'm like, yo, who wants to shit? I put together all your competitors' ads into one little PDF. And who wants it? You're going to get to see what ads they're running behind the wall. Post a comment with the word ads. And oh my God, dude, I have some screenshots of my iPhone still like, Bro, there were like 300 comments, 500 comments on one fucking post. One yeah. post. And then yeah. those people are going to convert with whatever you have to sell, right? Even if we only sell one, it was free. And it's right. we were talking about like sending emails today. 
to where it's a little bit hard to convert stuff in email and real estate, but like in the other businesses, dude, it's a cash cow with email and SMS, dude, send out an email. We make some money, send out an email, get all the appointments you need. It is wild. And like, that's just like the top of the funnel of it. I love it. I'm oh, yeah. somewhat new to this whole game. The, the email, yeah, email thing. We we actually, and uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you share this thing. Um, TTT, TTP, Zachary's coming from the TTP world. Zachary, what's going on? TTP, that's how I got started. Oh, Brent really? Oh, yeah, I, I was listening wow. to, um, I remember driving, listening to fucking Wholesaling Inc. With my uh, uh, wholesale hotline in the, in the back. Gym. Dude, have it. We got, we got to have Brent Daniels, RJ Bates. Oh, Boom. somebody tag Brent Daniels in this and, and, and tag RG Bates in this video and let's make them battle it out on one. Dude, I mean, the thing is, like, it doesn't matter who you throw at RJ, he wants the smoke, he always wants it. Doesn't matter who it is, where it is, when it is, why it is. It's like he'll take it on. I remember, so you know, we got unfortunate news that Pace Morby does not want the smoke, he doesn't. We had oh, we some. Did? Yeah, he, he responded to some confidants and he doesn't want it. So, unfortunately, <laughs> RJ, you know, that's tough. But, like, we had a whole call out. Aaron, Aaron Bevin sat here for like 45 seconds calling out Pace Morby, saying that he could not beat, could not beat the man, RJ Bates. And I guess, I guess it came to fruition. But, I mean, anybody who wants to take on RJ, it's a, uh, it's a tall mountain to climb. But, I mean, eh. If you All right, win, this this you this has to be the best comment that I've ever seen. Yo, yo, this is the best, comment, best ever. comment ever. Hold on, let me get a picture of that. Let me get, yeah, that. me too. Um, um, this is this is going hey. this is going to get printed, and it's going in a frame on a wall or something. Yep, dude, that's great. Right? We're getting live in the live over here. We're, We're being live. watched. People are so addicted to the closer show. Motherfuckers are watching this at the strip club. Bro. That, well, let's announce it for the people who don't see it. At the at, My God. In, at, Atlanta strip club, too, man. Right? You're in a real strip club. That's, Love this that's, fucking show. I'm on my laptop in the strip club. ATL, baby. Man. I'm about it. I'm about, that's the I'm kind a, of marketing we need right there. I'm a fan of you, Tango Dollar. I'm a fan of you. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Tango makes money set. on Speed to Lead too. Tango made some money on Speed to Lead. I believe he he done he done some he done some contracts, so he deserves that strip club. Don't blow all the contracts. <laughs> don't don't blow all the blow off that off that ass yeah. crack. Leave leave a little for the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> I tried getting Pace to do it, and I got a lot of whiplash for that. And oh, then he's no, trying to do that. Whiplash, huh? Hey, Amen. I mean, hey. get breaking into a schedule is hard enough, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I got some shit trying to break into a schedule. Fuck. His schedule is hard enough to fucking get into. I well, Pace it. texted me. Pace texted me the other day, and he's like, "Hey, my name is Pace Morby. Like, I don't fucking know who he is." Like, <laughs> dude, I implemented that. Dude, Stratton, check your text. I swear, I, I said, my name is Liam Benson. Dude, the way he introduced himself, I liked that. It was powerful. It was right. You know, you carry your presence with you, right? I, I, I stole that. I think that's that's how I've been opening all my texts. But, yeah, but I don't know. I think he lost interest in it. He, that was the only text that he, that he sent me. And I, re I responded, and I think he, 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 he must have. Yeah. You caused a little bit of drama on his life. He must, so. have, he must have Googled my name or something and, and found You guys caused him. drama on his life? Eugene did. Oh, we What'd you do? No. Nah. Oh, oh, somebody somebody invited me into somebody gives me a link. A friend of ours gave me a link. Uh and he's like, Hey, uh join this Zoom because they're talking about high speed. I'm like, oh, talking about high speed, great. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on whatever the zoom is and you know do my two cents it's our brand it's, i love it i jump in turns out it's pace morby's uh internal sub to mentorship call like a weekly call they do i i have no, I have no idea there's a like hundred fifty people on there um and i'm like what's up uh, i didn't say nothing i'm just like reading 
and then, and then uh, people were like saying nice things about iSpeed, and then somebody jumps in and like, no, you no, know, we called on some leads from iSpeed to lead for some for some guy, and it was like, I don't know about it. So I start commenting. I'm like, let's do it. Let, Let's do it on a live. Like, let's call him. Like, you, we'll give you free leads. You call him. We'll see what happens. They just started breaking balls, and they, they kicked me out and uh, all that. Uh, but I, I had to step in, man. I was like, hey, you want to say, you want to say the leads are not good? Call him up. I'll give you some free ones. There, see how there's a little bit more to that story too. So I'm not going to name names because I mean I just don't want to put under the bus like that, right? But so <laughs> the, the person who was talking trash is a relatively new but big name in the space carries a lot of weight especially at the time there was a some event that happened at the time they gained a lot of notoriety as being really skilled at talking to leads and so one of our oh, customers no, I know exactly what you're talking lead, about bought over 20,000 worth of uh, speed to leads right okay passed them off to this guy's group and this guy's group came back and said every single one of them were tire kickers apart from one contract right this is off of $20,000 worth of PPC leads. I don't care what method you're doing to generate PPC leads, right? There's no uh -huh. way you can ever buy 20,000 worth of PPC leads and they're all tire kickers. So anyways, we got that list that the guy bought and we said, you know what? Let's just call it on our own and see what we can do. Generated like four or five contracts and the greatest soundbite you've ever heard of somebody being so interested in like somebody being so interested in creative financing that they name dropped it themselves. They were like, this is so interesting. Wow. That is so cool. That is, wow. That's, that's creative. Right. And like this girl said that out of the blue, just as I was pitching her on creative financing and all, like we got multiple contracts off this dude's leads. And so, I mean, we have some theories about what really happened to those leads. I'm not going to, you know, air anything here, but you know, that's why Gene had to, had to ride up to the defense. Cause it was, uh, something, something was going on with those. Yeah, man, I'm just, I'm honestly, I'm looking for some beef, man. I'm okay with some, beef. I'm okay with some beef, man. Somebody, somebody want to fuck with me? Please do it. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to, Hey, I'm going to America tomorrow. I'm going to United States tomorrow. I'm flying out tomorrow night. And, uh, let's, let's be, we got to beef more in this industry. There's not enough of it. Dude, you all the top influences are blue WWE wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> Just locked up another contract an hour ago from a oh hell yeah, ooh from a clearance lead. That's even better. Bro, right. I love I love I love your business model. By the way, I fucking love it. Thanks, Both ways, man. I love it for the client and I love the scalability of what you're doing. Have you have you checked it out? You've you've had time to check 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 out the the portal and stuff. No, but I mean, pay per click leads. Like I can get your model. Yeah. If I didn't generate all my leads for free, I'd do it. But all of our leads come in for free. <laughs> um, and that's crazy. And that's you awesome. can't beat that. That's, you can't beat you that. You can't beat it. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I, the I thing, think right? the way you offer it, and I ain't I ain't competing uh, with that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, my ROI is infinite. Tank, tango dollars. Is 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 getting there? Everybody who's who's really big in real estate knows the power that PPC can provide, and they 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 show all their followers the power that PPC can give them, right? In just you know, like you said, it just so you know so much faster turnaround than any other lead type. They're going to be coming in. I mean, it changes the paradigm from outbound to inbound. There's so many great benefits from it. Like somebody, I, I've done tens of thousands of cold calls for for my personal real estate business and like switching from from cold calling to ppc is so significant so significant but the problem is is that running a ppc campaign on your own if you're not having an agency do it for you it's both expensive confusing a lot of time goes into it it's not easy to do but then when you're going to pay somebody to do it then it's just flat out expensive right that's what it well, came you to you guys eliminate the barrier to entry dude like you really do. Exactly. That's what I loved about yep. it. Like there's no barrier to entry because like there's two different types of barrier to entry to get in PPC. Number one is know-how. Another number two is fucking cost. Right. And you eliminate that out the gate for anybody who really wants to hop in and go out and test out the chops. They can do it. And that's what I love. And that way you can hopefully keep it as low as um, cold calling. And I mean, PPC and cold calling work out generally to be the same cost per lead, like over time. Mm hmm. But then your cash conversion cycle on PPC is just shorter. Well, it should be. I hope it is. And you're dealing with a completely different type of um, you need to be a 
better salesman, I would say, like a true closer with PPC, than like cold calling. You're you're really pushing it. It's forward, a numbers right? game. It's a numbers mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're ready to go. If you're if you're unconfident to close it right then and there, like hey, you know, yeah, like you you hey. need to have conviction with that shit. Yeah, some they're guys are out another form. Some guys can't do it on the first date, you know. Some guys have to go to the third or fourth date. Even yeah, I if think, the, you know, yeah. I think every business should be doing all marketing channels, honestly. Like, it, it's a stool, right? So you got PPC, cold calling, direct mail. I mean, because you don't want to just have one, let's say, for oh, yeah. laps you. Dude, we're, right now, we're doing, and we're tracking each one, like, ROI religiously. Yep. Affiliates. Right, affiliates. We're doing YouTube ads, Facebook ads. This is just for high speed. This is not even uh -huh. for what we generate. We're doing affiliates, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, this show, um, and we've got we've got VAs that are sitting there and and just posting to groups, screenshots yep. of leads. You you guys, somebody on the show probably seen them, uh, probably seen one of them screenshots, and and it looks like they're not our VA. I, I, I gave him some copy to write so it doesn't look like it's a VA of ours. Yep, exactly. It just looks like a person like, say, hey, I saw this cool lead. Like anybody wholesale in there? Let's JV there or something like that. Uh, that That's channel, great. we're we're going to an affiliate conference and trying to get more like super affiliates. Uh, what else we got? A whole bunch of them. But we're tracking every single one. Like Liam's about to go to a conference and just like hustle there. At the, in, uh, and be in San in, Diego, uh, guys. San Diego. Are you going to Scale um, and Escape? Yes, sir. Yeah. Repping, repping. I heard it was expensive so, so to sponsor for, that. Dude. To sponsor it? I'll, I'll talk to you about it afterwards. Um, I I, I already know who you're gonna tell me. I already talked to him. You you talked to I was like, Jesus Christ! I know. I was. I, I was like, dude, I don't. I don't really know. Um, I mean, dude, Scott's killing it, and he's got to dominate right now. Like that's. I just I sponsored like four events in a row maybe three months ago. And then I also dropped on bigger pockets ads, like 10 grand. How'd the bigger pockets ads go? Sucks. It sucks. It's it bro. I don't feel like it's your avatar, dude. It sucked. I, I, well, I just thought with so many impressions on the right? forum ads, it, we would get a bunch of, them. I was like, whatever, it's low conversion, screw it. But we're going to be seen by like a hundred thousand people. I'm like, we'll get it. We'll get a couple thousand of, of members. No, we got like it's the worst cost per lead we've ever had on any anything. We still have our balance with them. I think we still have about three grand with them left on uh, on on the podcast ads, uh, but the forum ads have been absolutely underwhelming. It's been absolutely terrible. We did um, podcast. We did it for six months, and it didn't convert anything. Like we got like three leads, and this is on a very relevant podcast, and it wasn't the podcast fault. But like, I just don't think it was. Um, and like, I talked to him, and he like does a ton of research. And he's a really good friend of mine. He's like, bro, people would tell me it takes like a year and a half of like just poking that fucker in the head every day. You know what I'm saying? Like every week, yeah. Of like true That's advertising I mean. of, I'm here, I'm here, I'm like, here, I'm here. That's I love to listen to podcasts. Advertising, dude. Right. I love to listen to podcasts. I mean, I listen to so many different real estate podcasts, Joe Rogan podcasts. But like, a when it comes to advertisements super easy just to skip over them right yeah, so i mean that's right but like all of a sudden you know like i'm listening to the joe rogan experience right i get poked in the head eight thousand times about fucking athletic greens when i'm thinking or about going on my health kick guess yeah. what i'm gonna buy right i'm so i mean that's what it comes to right it's a long-term game it's not like let's get conversions right now you know it's not like a uh i think it's brand value, building right? brand awareness i don't even that's think it's the advertising it's i think it's yeah you're spending you know what podcasts I'm I'm addicted to, I don't, it's not even a podcast, but Howard Stern, man, that's the fucking best audio Who's radio. Howard Stern, bro, how fucking Dude, old are you, Gene? I, I don't know, man. I just <laughs> something about that show, the way they've done it, and the way they shoot the shit on there, and mm -hmm. and it's it's the most popular radio show ever. I think I'm bro, pretty Joe sure Rogan like, beats everybody. With well, maybe Joe Rogan, yeah, podcast wise for sure, but radio or X, XM. XM Radio basically exists in large part because of Howard Stern. But who they got two, like they got radio? two they got two channels on them. There's a, there's a crowd for it. I mean, I, dude, I don't know why, but they, those those guys funny 
Like it's just funny shit, man. I, no I'm filter, all good thing. interviewers. Yeah. <laughs> they had a serial killer call one time on the show. It was crazy. This show is just nuts. You could, yeah, it's, yeah. I saw that video. Dude went into marketing mode immediately. He knew that was a gold moment. Yeah. The clip's got tens of millions of views on it. Oh yeah. Damn, you guys give away first ninety nine, get your first clearance suite for a dollar. It's a good offer. Yeah. One dollar. Oh, have you read um? Have you read hundred million dollar offer yet? No, no, no. It's the best marketing book I've ever read in my life. Hundred million dollar offer by Alex Hormozzi. I've seen it. I've seen it, and 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 I gotta read that. It is number one. Number offers one. is everything. Offers is everything. The way you package it, the way you throw stuff in there, it's a, it's a, it's absolutely everything. Well, it's all of it. What does anybody have any real estate questions? I feel bad that we're only talking about like business. Dude, let's call a seller. Let's call a seller. Let's uh, let's, let's call. You want to do it? Yeah. Pick a good one. While I'm getting the information pulled up for everybody, uh, Stratton, could you for everybody in the chat just explain the cash conversion cycle and what that means? So, like, how fast is your money coming back into your bank account after you spend it? Right. So if I can spend $5 and I know in 30 seconds I'm going to get another $7 and it's predictable, then I can that's a business, right? And then, okay, I can do that consistently to where it's really hard in real estate to where like with that cash conversion cycle, how long are these deals staying in the pipeline? How long have they stayed in your CRM? Are they getting there from like 30 days? Is it like we're talking to them and they're converting in 20 days? Like that's really good in real estate. Like what is that amount of time? on top of your cost per lead and everything else. And then that way you can spend even more predictably. I hope that helps. Okay. So here is a lead and a half right here. Gene, you got to make sure that this one didn't sell. Guys, I need help. I have, I had three deals get contract time. And then my team gets ghosted. I'm expanding my team and doing dispositions and step away from acquisitions. What do I need to do to help them close? I mean, I'd step back in acquisitions, number one. Um, how did you get go? Did you get ghosted in escrow? Is that what you're saying? Generally for us, we no matter how long the escrow is, we follow up with people every week and just give them an update of whatever's going on with title to let them know. And then time kills all deals. We try and get everything closed as fast as possible. Yep. I'd love to hear what happens. Gene, you're 100% right on bro. I don't know how to pronounce that name, but I don't agree with you. Joe Rogan's king. Where'd Gene go? I'm not sure where he went. Liam, what's that lead? You want me to double I check in, uh, yeah, I, I just found out why it didn't sell. I, they probably didn't sell. It's a wholesaler. But you know what? I'll call on it, and I'll see if there's any uh, meat and on You know what we're about to Los do? Angeles. We were actually discussing this with a product team. For those people that say that, like, hey, I'm a wholesaler, those leads actually get bought all the time. But we're going to start them more asking them more questions about the deal. If they say that they're a wholesaler, they're going to go into yeah. another loop of questions. Yeah. Because people, we have like 500 people who listed themselves as an end cash buyer. About one eighth of all the users on iSpeed listed themselves as I'm an end cash buyer. Those guys don't want to call and close and negotiate and all that shit. Exactly. They actually want the wholesaler wholesaler leads. So we're gonna we're gonna expand that a little bit. That's that's brilliant. What's going on, Oscar? All right, let's just call this guy. I'll get some details about it. And then if anybody's out there in Los Angeles, I'm not even going to pull up data on this property. But if there's somebody out there in, in, in L.A. who's an end cash buyer who wants a nice hey, deal. Yeah. Oscar is, in, Oscar's in California. He's a he's a customer of ours and a longtime fan of our of our business with iSpeed. Oscar. He's coming to the mastermind, oh. actually. Oh, he is Oscar? No shit. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. You say you can't get info on it? Right. Oh, here we go. Well, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not going to bother pulling up. This guy's just going to be everything that I need.
We're going to double dial him straight back. Please leave your message for 7148569091. Kevin, my name is Liam. You filled out my website, cashofferoption.com. Just want to get lined up at that property that you've got in LA. Give me a call back here, 651 Talk to you later. I'm going to send him a quick text. I got no answer coming. Okay. I didn't. This is Yo, just a Trucka. lead that came in. This is a lead that came in uh, greater than 40 hours ago. And nobody got to it? You're in Riverside. Nobody got to it. No, nobody bought this one. I'll take it. I'm in Riverside, CA. Sweet, man. What's I'll get up? it passed on to you if I get a. Uh... Dude, truck guy, what's up, man? We haven't seen you in way too long. Is he a regular? Does this go to Facebook? Used to yeah, be. It, goes to Facebook. Yeah, it goes to Facebook, YouTube. Sometimes the messages don't come through on StreamYard, which we I don't, haven't figured out why or why not. But All right. This one, uh, I don't want to call another wholesaler. I'm just sorting them by leads that I think are going to sell. Got one in Bakersfield. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about this one. All right. Bakersfield. The details. We love it. Garage. It's a two-car garage, two bed, one bath. The property is in poor condition. It needs air conditioning, paint inside, paint outside, cabinets, flooring, plumbing, electrical, bathrooms. It's owner occupied. They want to sell ASAP because they're relocating. Okay. They've owned it for 30 to 50 years. There's no mortgage on the property. Yo, I'm getting a hard on. What in the fuck? Dude, that's a great fucking lead. Wow. This is an excellent lead. It's probably like five hundred bucks. It's probably like five hundred bucks. That's fine. <laughs> I'll take that one. Thank you. Thank you, nobody, for buying this. I mean, this is like I listen to this, and this is just money, money, money. Yeah, I'm gonna put the uh, address out here. Either that, or it might be a smaller town, because usually California stuff gets sold out. It might be a smaller town. They said Bakersfield. Yeah, oh, Bakersfield. Really? All right. Do they have to put in a price too? No. We don't ask him the price because we don't. I. This is my own hang up on it. I, I believe it's better to ask him price when the, there was a pressure of a phone call instead of them being a hero behind a keyboard. Okay. I don't want to give him that opportunity to anchor it online where it's when it's easy and, and you don't have to worry about embarrassing yourself with asking too much. Okay. I mean, you're the PPC expert. But, I, but I'm but i starting to... Uh, we had a live today. With, we had a Q&A with our members. Starting to rethink that a little bit. And it's, bro, it's a whole other pillar that you need, is my personal opinion. Her name's Sheila, and it's only three o'clock for her. She's got to answer. No way she doesn't. No way. Just keep dialing her. She's there. Yeah. Just ignoring me. I'm ended. I'm going to triple dial.
Come on, let's get a conversation. I Jeez. know, right? That just means that the first conversation is going to be freaking amazing. That's what that means, usually. It is. Should call you back. Please leave your message for six six one three seven six two. Sheila, my name is Liam. I'm with Cash Offer Option. You filled out my website. You want an offer on your property, sounds like. Give me a call back here at 651. You can call me, text me. You can FaceTime me if you really wanted to. That's always an opportunity. But uh, otherwise, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Sheila. Dude, I love the way you add humor into your sales. Dude, I mean, telling stories and adding humor is the most important thing. And we'll, we'll see it if we get an answer from somebody sometime today. Um, I love to tell stories and ingrain people in because it just breaks down barriers so quickly. Um, you know, so like it's right when I get an answer, I like to go into a little story about why it took me so long to get back to them or like what was just going on in my life, like the last 30 seconds, like. You know, I just got back to my desk, just made myself some tea. And honestly, I was going through my uh, form here. I panicked. I realized I'd seen your thing on my sheet for the past two days and I hadn't called you yet. Here I am now. I hope it's not too late. Is it? You know, something along those lines, right? And it, then it's like the barriers are gone. Like, I'm a human now. I'm not a sales rep. I'm not somebody exactly. on the phone. You're a human. Right? Nobody talk, bro, nobody talks about that shit. Well, I know Pace is one of the best storytellers I know. I'm trying to think, but not a lot of people insert humor into their sales, like because the Sandler sales method is so dry, and that's yeah. a lot of stuff that um a lot of uh, real estate people follow. But I think adding in humor makes the relationship so much better. Um, Next up, we've got Donna in Arkansas. Oh, I got West guy Memphis. In Arkansas. Joanne, the book's name is One Hundred Million Dollar Offer. Three bed, one bath. It's in poor condition. It needs paint, appliances, cabinets, plumbing, water heater, bathrooms. It's tenant occupied. They want to sell ASAP. There's no mortgage. It's not listed. All right. As long as we can get one of these people to answer. Hello, is this Miss Donna? Yes, it is. Donna, my name's Liam. You filled out my website, cashofferoption.com. Did uh, does that ring a bell? Uh, mm, well, no. You were filling out a lot of websites. Yeah. Okay, I see. But you're looking to get the home sold. Is that still correct? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm in luck. I think I want to buy it. I really like everything about it. I just need some extra details from you. Does that work? Yeah, I'm trying to see what you, what you done seen it. I haven't seen it. No, I just saw all the information that you so graciously gave to me. Um, that's all I've seen about it so far. Okay. Could you just catch me up to speed about the condition of the property? You know, big ticket items, roof, AC, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's going to need some work done. Um, uh huh. Because. You know, I've been retired for five years, so it really ain't been done since I've been retired. Sure. So it needs some inside work, floors, not floors. Uh, well, yeah, because he did probably the floors, the carpet, yeah, the wall, the walls. Just I'm selling it as is, so it needs some work done. So mm -hmm. I had a roof put on there about ten years ago, so the roof's supposed to be twenty five years old. Okay. You know, it's supposed to be, you know, good for twenty five years. So. But uh, anyway, I uh, you know, had some wiring deed on the outside. Uh huh. Because over there in Arkansas, you know, you have to that wiring had to be on the outside, sit on the inside. Yep. And uh, what else? Did Maybe, you get that? Did you get that done? You said, or I would need to get that done. It's done. That's done. I was doing all that when I was working. So gotcha. Uh huh. But the other, you know, stuff the kitchen probably needs. Uh, repairing somewhat, 
Because like I said, it's an inherited home. And um, my dad been gone about 14 years. Oh, sorry, so, yeah. But uh, I didn't, I've been paying the tax and stuff on it mm -hmm. since he was gone and stuff. So, so is your dad's I property? Get rid of it. I, can't, I can't maintain it no more. It's just a headache for you? Well, I can't keep up the upkeep of it. You know, mm -hmm. and the insurance company I couldn't pay yeah. that. It was so high. But when I was working, it was no problem. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm on fixed income, there's a lot of stuff I cannot do. Yeah, that makes sense. So, the yeah. repairs well, get expensive. Get now, I do have some tenants in there. Okay. How much are they paying? Huh? How much are they paying? 500 a month. Do you think that's about what they should be paying? They should be paying more, but I just. You're nice I, to you them. Know, them. Ken folks and stuff. You know how they do it. Ken people. Mm -hmm. They're the worst one that rents from. But anyway. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if I were to buy the house, I would need to, you know, get them out of there so that I can put in the renovations. Does that seem like it'd be feasible? Oh, yeah. That's, that ain't going to be no problem. Mm hmm. Are they on a contract? Are they just month to month with you? Room, a room, a living room, it's a, wow. a den, a kitchen, a bath. You don't have one bathroom, but it's got three bedrooms. And uh, it's got a storage house at the back. It's got a posh. Uh -huh. car. You know, you can pull your car up under there. You know, it's covered, but it's not. You know how you drive in and this thing set up. It's not there. I like uh, everything that I'm hearing. How much do you think that rent should be there? Well, you know, about two thousand three hundred, about six fifty, seven hundred, something like that. Because mm -hmm. of the three bedrooms, I got one big yep. room. But you can put two bedrooms, two beds in there, and dress the air chair. It's just that huge in the back. Okay. I'm just trying to see to sell it as it is. And so yep. the best one to give me a price, you know, that I want, you know, that's close to the price that I want. It's fine. Well, that is perfect because we do buy as is, so that does fit our timeline quite well. Now you mentioned that you buy in Arkansas. We do buy in Arkansas, yes, ma'am. Especially this okay. close to Memphis, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Memphis, yeah. Now, let me ask you this. You mentioned before that you'd let it go for the price you want. How much did you want for it? I wanted twenty. Uh huh. And what did you want now? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You said you wanted. Uh huh. <laughs> and I said no. Uh huh. I'm not gonna do that. Okay. Oh, a, you know, to me that's an embarrassment. My family, you know, because the house got. Front yard and a kind of huge backyard, and I know the land mm -hmm. is worth more than just what they were saying. You want to you feel know, like you got a deal from me, not like I got a deal from you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it was I like that. 15, I say 20. Well, so, how long has the yeah. property been in the family for? How long the house been there? Mm -hmm. Okay, the house, they had a, a storm over there in, in the 90s, and my dad had it repaired. Mm -hmm. So the house has been there since I was born, and I was born in 1950. Mm -hmm. But the house has been re remodeled and everything. It was in like in ninety four. Wow. So and it was remodeled. You grew up there? In the roof and, and you know, I had a new roof put on there like I said about about seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Before I retired. I've been retired six years, so it was done before I retired. So yeah. And you grew up there? Oh yeah. It's my home yeah. <laughs> but I can't keep it up. It's just too much. Yeah. It's too much. It's mm -hmm. too much and I'm just losing, you know, and it's just going down. I would set it to somebody who's falling and I could pass that I used to live there. That's you know. So that's it. Well I mean if you don't sell it, if nobody buys it for twenty, what is your plan then? Well I'm gonna see what 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 they ask me. Uh-huh. You know, it just depends. I really don't have no number in that, but I know it's not gonna be ten. Yeah, so there's more than ten. No, that's fair enough. I understand. Mm-hmm. Because it's, you know, if I had to, if I could get twenty fifteen thousand dollars, I could fix the house up myself and set a new rent for more than what it is. You How know, much? It's really not that much work to really be done because it's all rooms on it. Be great for a family, you know. They got kids and stuff because it's got three bedrooms and a mm -hmm. den and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, you well, know, 
Well, Ms. Donna, let me ask you, how much do you genuinely think it would cost to get, you know, for me to fix it up? I think that's a month, maybe 10 or 15 or 20. 10, 15. Because you got to go in and look at it. I, I, I'm i not a carpenter. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. But I do know there's some things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, I told my brother the other day, I said, y'all need to pull this car up. I've just been in here since I don't know how long. <laughs> so, you know, they need to take the carpet up. Uh-huh. But you have to do the walk through the seat yourself. Yes, ma'am. You know what it is or what. You know, I have seen some houses that have fallen in, you know, and stuff like that. But this house is not falling in, but people still living in it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We just need some, some work that I can't do. Yep. Uh huh. So, just, just to recap, I want to make sure I got everything right. So, I would need to do carpets for sure. The roof is good, so I don't need to do that. But as far as then the remodel, I would probably need to do the kitchen, the bathrooms, uh, the plumbing work and stuff. What about the boiler and water heater? So all the inside stuff needs to be done. Uh, now, the boiler, I don't, I don't, I had bought a hot water tank and I don't know when. It's got a hot water tank and it ain't got the new stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I live over here in Memphis, so it don't have all that. Yep. But, you know, it just depends know what you want to do in there but it's got a washroom you know with a hot water tank in a washroom so it's 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 kind of a big house like you know but it just needs some work done it needs some love and care that i can't give you right now yeah no i understand mm -hmm. donna can i be honest with you yes i think that the renovation is going to be more than twelve thousand, based on what i know for repairs in the area i mean okay. The kitchen alone would be about twelve thousand, and then we're gonna add in bathrooms, and then the flooring, and then all the other stuff. Probably a new water heater in there. We're looking yeah. probably closer to a thirty thousand dollar repair bill. Oh really? Mm hmm. Things have gotten so expensive nowadays, especially yeah. since COVID. Yeah. You know how much yeah. a sheet of plywood costs? Like ninety six dollars. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. My mm -hmm. son just had a house built. So yeah. I know. I know. But the housing market is high, you know, but no I know it takes a lot to do a repair because mm -hmm. he's spending a lot of money. He ain't even moving in his house yet, so, you know. <laughs> Hopefully soon, though, right? Yeah, he ain't all the friends, so yeah, it'll be soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, it's it's not, it's been up there for, for, for a minute. I ain't even going to it. Don't about to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I get Looking, go to the casino and win some money. <laughs> there we go. No, no, that's a, probably a pretty decent plan right there. Somebody gonna rich me to get that state. So it's all good. Like I said, it's a home house, and I want it. You uh -huh. know, I just, I just hate. I'm keeping the tax on it because I don't want the state to just come take it. Yeah, you know? yep. Well, that's smart. Then you walk away with nothing. Right. So I'm paying tax on it. Okay. So I wouldn't need to cover, I mean, are there any other liens on it, anything like that, that I would need to cover? No, but if you just think about it, if you don't want it, I ain't, ain't going to be bad, but you know. Well, I appreciate, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. If we don't buy it, you're going to be okay? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be fine. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to be fine. Well, you mentioned earlier you retired. What did you do for your job? I worked at the regional one. I okay. was uh, insurance verification. I just retired about five years ago. Are you yeah. enjoying retirement? I know my my uh, significant other, her father, just recently retired. He was a professor, and he goes stir crazy. He's taken up what seems about eight hundred new hobbies, new one every week, and he's getting pretty good at them too. Well, I'm just starting back to working for a lady in a, in her uh, mm -hmm. income tax business. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna answer the phone. And that gets me out the house. So yeah, I'm active now. I'm not a sit down person. Yeah, no, I'm the exact same way. I don't ever see how I'd retire. I just like to. Nah. I mean, and, and you're I such like a different people. So that's my, you know, I like to go out and do things, you know, for other people. Well, you have a pleasant so, voice too. Just talking with you on the phone, I can see why you'd be good at that. Yes, I love children. I mean, you know, I do a lot of stuff in my church with the kids. So mm -hmm. you know, I do too quite a bit to keep me busy. So. Like I said, I wouldn't be married. I understand. Yeah. You know, it's not what you want. That's fine. Well, Ms. Donna, I mean, 
Just that 20,000, I don't know if I can come up that high. I think that's just a little high for me. Do you have an estimate of what that property would cost when it's fully fixed up? It's, it's worth about 50,000. 50, 50 or 60,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, I guess when you factor in my holding costs for the taxes for the time I hold it, then when I fix it up, if I rent it out, then I wouldn't need to list it. But if I decide to, you know, list it so that a family could move in there, you said it was a family house, so that might be the best move. Then I, you know, I'd have to pay the six percent. You just see why that twenty thousand gets a little difficult to hit. Okay. But what would you suggest? Well, I don't want to insult you with a lowball offer. Do you have any wiggle room off that price? I have had somebody to me uh fifteen. You didn't take that? No, well, I wish I had, you know, you know, talking to my own sisters and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, 15, 16 ain't bad, so I'm going to see if they'll call me back, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. so I said, okay. Ah. You know, I think I've got some really good information on it, but I have my best friend. He knows the West Memphis area really excellent. Would you mind yeah. if I just gave you a call back in about, I, yeah, it shouldn't you shouldn't take me long to. Yeah, that's, I, ain't, I ain't messed up that. Like I said, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is what it is, you know. Now, with so, technology this these days, I wouldn't even need to drive by it. I just need to call him and understand what exactly that neighborhood is like and, you know, whether it's a great rental area or whether it's a great homeowner area. What You know, just what my best yeah. method would be. Because, okay. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm really I'm interested in it. You know, Perfect. Okay. Well, listen, I'll give you a call back in probably um, the next five or 10 minutes. It's just after I get hold of him. He's usually on speed dial for me. So um, was that yeah, all right for you? So do I. So do I. And I'm a young guy too. So I know to avoid all of them, but they still call me. Yeah. But you're going to call me from this number, right? From this number right here. Okay. Okay, then. What's your name? My name is Liam. Liam. Yep, just like Liam Neeson. Like Liam, Liam on the show topic that I be watching. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right then. I'm looking for your call. Okay, then. I'll be back in contact with you very soon, Miss Donna. All right, thank you. Bye bye, bye, -bye. now. All right, I have no idea how to run numbers in Arkansas. <laughs> Bro, Sean, is this hard in those areas? Those houses are worth such little. Or mm -hmm. that yeah. They're gonna fucking give it to you. Is this the smoothest guy or what, man? Bro, you're smooth. You're smooth. Oh, my only feedback. I love the Sandler upfront agreement, so I get them to know what's gonna happen at the end of it, and that mm -hmm. way I can fucking pin them. You know what I'm saying? To where like, hey, by the end of this call, we're gonna we're gonna have one or two things happen. I'm gonna get you an offer, or I'm gonna talk to my finance department, and then I'm gonna get you an offer. So I like that. Know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they know what to expect. Um, they know to expect at the end. That. Have you read any of the Sandler that. books? I've I've have done a number of this stuff on the Sandler method, and I've I've done a lot of listening to Steve Strang stuff too. Yeah, that's that's the number one thing I pulled away from Steve and Max is just the upfront mm -hmm. agreement. I that love way, it. Like, I can pin them, and when they agree to it, and then when the end comes, like, like hey, what the fuck's going on here? Strang pulled away from Steve and Max that he's got to read the Sandler books, and I second that. That that system is is the shit, bro. I love the Sandler, but you're you're a fucking savage, bro. The house, if it's worth fifty, and she thinks it's worth fifty, and she wants twenty, and I guarantee you it's thirty. With those, bro, we just fucking walk. We were doing some yeah. stuff in Flint, Michigan, and it was just, um, and that's what sucks too, because they need to sell. Well, because I mean, when we're looking at it here, you know, the investor needs to make money. If who's going to buy it, the wholesale assignment on this wouldn't be worth the time. No. Yeah, this is a bummer. Unless I get, yeah, 10 or below is the only real viable option on it. Because, I mean, it's tough when you're talking, you know, one, two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 on this. I mean, that's like, you know, 5000 That's 10% of the whole property. Yeah, exactly. It's a tough, makes it tough to negotiate. There's not, you know, we're not talking in terms of thousands, but like, you know, you can talk hundreds and get into the middle, you know, lower percentages. So it's tough. Well, great job, bro. I think you killed it. Thank you. Yeah, bro, you're smooth as fuck. You're smooth. You're underrated. Yeah. You need to enter into the Closers Olympics next year. That's the plan. That's the plan. I mean, you know, the way that I, I do sales and I teach sales is like just connect, tell a story, listen. Like, 
people listen to hear, but they don't listen to understand. That's the biggest disconnect is people just like they got their next question lined up and they want to ask it. And then they'll interject to ask a question. You're like, they'll move down their checklist, right? They'll start at the very top and go check, check, check 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 right you know and they're just going to go through and nothing will deter them off of that route the problem with that is like it feels really forced it feels like you know you've only got a predetermined path and it's just like at that point you're not having a conversation with a person you're just a robot asking questions and then like why are you there for oh yeah i mean you if that was a viable house you would have bought that house Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. That that's stupid. I'll just that. give her a call back and just say, yeah, based on it, you know, um, if that person comes back with a fifteen thousand dollar offer, please take it. Otherwise, it's you know, I don't want to insult you with the lowball offer and we'll just call it there. Um, who's who's the guy? Zach Hamilton. Um, eventually I'm wanting to hire it out. I'm still the the Pizza Hut delivery guy on delivery guy wages. Oh bro, if you're on the delivery guy wages, then you gotta develop a new skill. I'm not Dude, well, Zach, to Zach, as I'm reading this, right, bro, like, I know you've been in here before, and, like, you've said things like, I can't negotiate my way out of a wet cardboard box. You've said stuff like that. You come in, like, I don't know how to do sales. For me, right, like, envisioning what I am and telling myself I am that person, it changes my entire there mindset, right? Go. I tell you, you know, like, I, I, I tell people, like, I'm a salesman, right? I'm a closer. I'm this, right? I'm a businessman. And it makes me that. And then I have to do what it takes to realize that, right? And putting yourself into that sort of mind space is so significant. And just like having the confidence to do stuff. That's 90% of it, right? Like I guarantee 99% of what people do in sales is already ingrained into them based on the, you know, regular day-to-day -day interactions they have with other people, right? And based on you coming in and chatting here, right? You're a sociable person. All the real introverts, guess what? We got, you know, 40 plus people watching right now. They're all sitting in the back room, right? They're sitting in the back. They're not chatting, right? You're here always talking, right? You're naturally extroverted. That's the skill set right there, right? All you've got to do is just take it and add confidence to it. You're going to be a killer in sales. That's what it comes to. Go talk to all the wholesalers. Get all their stupid dead leads. and Because you, you got to develop the skill, dude. Like mm -hmm. As you like move into business, I think, it, yes, you don't need to like be a master, but you have to do it at a point in time. Like you can't, if you can't do sales and marketing, then you'll never like get through it. And it's yep. okay to go donate some blood, donate some plasma. That's what I did. Get some extra marketing money, spend that $400 a month on ISP to lead leads and go at it and fucking sharpen that ax, dude. That's the hardest part. Hey, hell yeah, Gene. Right? Like right there. Dude, right. we're, we're hooking up. The, we're like, we're, we're actually, you know, it's scary for us. Like, cause we have people buying leads for the I'll be right back, bucks. guys. Uh, 500 bucks a pop, people are buying fresh leads that are coming in because fresh leads are obviously like that's where most potential is for deals and for yeah. income. But we still, we still make it at a point to, to, to get some leads in there that are like a dollar. So guys like this can, can freaking, yeah, that lead might be like, you know, five days old or six days old, whatever. We, look, you just read Dan Fazio close a fucking 340k ARV. He locked it up at like in the one hundreds. Yeah. No, and this guy, he's not bullshitting. He was on the show before. We we've we've done a JV thing with him. He's not bullshitting. And um, dude, Zach, I love that man. Uh, I'm still Pizza Hut delivery guy on delivery guy wages, bro. I'll tell you this, I was uh, like I was like a manager of managers at IBM before I started my. And guess what? I had to fucking start from zero. I had to learn a new skill. Like Stratton said, I had to learn a new skill. Number one of it, the first skill was sales. Second skill was I, I became, I, I was like, I learned how to fly fucking drones. Like, what the fuck? Third was this advertising stuff because I had to figure out how to market my drone shit and how to sell it. Exactly. Dude, I was... I was I was I was watching Grant Cardone. I was watching all that shit. I was buying some books, Grant Cardone, Sandler, other stuff, just loading up on sales stuff, dude. I had zero sales skills because I've been a software project manager for my whole life for like 10 years. I was in software, dude. My salary was pretty good. Like it was in the hundreds, right? It was decent. Decent for like 
Visa, but I knew like it's not enough, dude. dude you can't fucking live on a hundred something grand nowadays. Like, it, well, you can, but it's just like I couldn't. I was in Boston, and I'm like, dude, like, where's the money? Exactly. What's going on? Um, and so, dude, but you think that you being the delivery guy is any different than any than? It's no different. I was a software project. My, my family thought it was crazy. They're like, dude, you have the highest salary. Our whole family, this and that. You've been working for this, like you, you, you got like you know corporate ladder or whatever. And I had to start literally from scratch, dude. I, I had a chick leave me, dude. I had an ex that was like, dude, peace the fuck out. Like I, I thought, like, what do you like? Because I was like, I just instantly became like a baby. I became oh, a baby wow. at what at You're what I was baby. doing. You know what I'm saying? I was a baby at sales, and I was a baby at fucking social, and I was a baby at everything that I knew that I started. So I, and I had to take that fuck, I had to do it, but I wasn't like super young. I was like 27, but I was like, fuck it, fuck it, man. Who cares? I mean, dude, so, so it's no different if you're a fucking dude, Jeff Bezos, uh, Jeff Bezos was a wall street guy and then he moved across the country. Yeah. He, he, he had some money and all that stuff, but he, he also started at, at, at something he sucked at. Bro, Look at those early he Jeff invented Bezos Amazon. Like when pe people don't understand about most business, nobody's got a fucking space. Like they're creating this shit on their own, out of nowhere. They have no idea what's going on, and they're developing a skill as they go to keep on going, dude. So, like for you, I would say I would contact all the like Pace Morby style. Hey, send me all your dead leads, and then sharpen that fucking axe, and then never say I'm just a pizza guy or I'm a pizza delivery guy ever again, ever. That's the worst you could ever say to yourself. Like, go get the book called Psycho, Cy Psycho Cybernetics. Our entire company is reading that book right now. Because if that's the only way you're thinking about yourself, and Liam was talking about this earlier, then you will never progress. Like, But if you hold yourself to a different accountability, like, okay, no, I'm the person who is a monster closer, and then you start acting that way. Like, you really have to trick your brain into thinking that way, dude. Zachary dude, I, should come on here, and we should give him a lead, and he should fucking make a call, even if he sucks at it. Dude, yeah, oh, that would be so. Ah, that's a great idea. We got to have a day that like is just for that. Like people, like like you know, bro, do sales, coaching. Yeah, free like just do Friday. free sales coach up. Like, hey, I love it. There we go. Yeah, every Wednesday, come get grilled for an hour. That bro, that's you want to talk about. You are saving hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you're getting that much value in just coaching between the coaching and the leads, dude. Like that is unmatched value that's a good idea i love that right there love that ah that's a great idea and just so you guys know mr zachary and everybody else listening stratton has built multiple million dollar businesses dude is a beast like this is advice that people pay for the right to hear so make sure you guys not are multiple. taking notes not multiple, multiple. one at least one. one we have at okay. least one the other ones are in the six figure marks but thank they're you they're on their way they're on their way. We'll have multiple this year. <laughs> we got to have you back on so we can fix the statement. I am just making calls, calls or something landing, and being confident in knowing it'll happen. Um, right? I just feel like I'm making calls in hopes of something landing. It gets is better with time. Go ahead, Gene. I just wonder, like, is that the shit that you really want to do, though, man? That's what I want to. That's what I want you to ask yourself. Do you? Do you? Do you are you just trying to make money, or like, is there something that that is it like a personal challenge? Like, you got to figure out if you if you if you're dude. At some point, I don't. And I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think you got to like, maybe you got to pray for this. Maybe it's a thing from above. Maybe it's a thing from God. But at some point, you got to like. And it's fuck it. That's probably the hardest thing to do. Um, because I, I don't really blow up until I stop trying to do two unrelated businesses at the same time that, that serve completely different customers. And, and and it's but at some point you gotta be like, all right, you know what? Yeah, I don't like something about this and I don't like something about this, but this is all I'm gonna fucking do right now. And it's the only fucking thing that I'm gonna figure out and focus and, and become good at it. There's a there's a, it's a really most people, him, bro, but most people don't fucking make anything cool because they are, they quit before they get good at something. So there they don't go. love 
what they got into. You're not going to love what you got into until you get pretty fucking good at it. And that point, you're almost like, it's almost like you got to fucking, you got to pull out of yourself. You got to zoom out of yourself and you got to be like, all right, you bitch, you do this until you get good and then see how it feels. Because until you get good, you're going to feel like this, this might not be the right thing for you to be doing, but just fucking get good at it, man. Like, and, and then yeah, once you're good at something, Hey, I used to not even like wholesaling. I was like, what the fuck, man? People buying fucking houses from old ladies for cheap. I used to not even like it. I'm telling you. I used to not even keep, I used to, I used to be like, what the fuck is this? But you know what it was? It was my fucking own brain telling myself that, oh, hey, you should find an excuse to fucking, to fucking go do something else because this is getting tough. And if you fail, a lot of people might know about it and you're going to get embarrassed. Oh, dude. Uh, Bro, let me throw that out there. That was fire. That shit was fire. When I'm posed with difficult decisions that I have to make, I just sit there for a moment and I try to think of myself from a third person point of view and I just say, what should he do? How should he do that? Right? And then that way I take my emotion out of the decision making process and I just think about things completely objectively, right? Like I'm about to call somebody and I'm like, okay, how should I navigate this call based on Right, like with that lady, her name was Donna. She was in Arkansas, right? So how should he navigate this call? Slow down, she's probably old. Donna's not a common name. She's in Arkansas, she's Southern. Put on a little bit of a drawl, right? Be relatable, something like that. You can do that in small situations like that or in big decisions where it's like, is this the right business for me, right? Like, and then you can just go and, you know, you've narrated your whole life. You know exactly what state you are. You can't lie to yourself in that moment. And you should think, right, just having the penultimate knowledge of somebody else, right? Say, like, I knew everything about Stratton, everything, every moment, from the moment he woke up to the moment he went to bed. I would be the best person to sit there and be like, he shouldn't do this. This does not fit him right now, right? Like, this is not, like, a good thing for him, right? Or maybe he should do that, right? And you can do that to yourself because you know, nobody knows yourself better than you. And 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 uh, I, love, I love how people get uh, – us guys get so excited when someone's, like – Try to figure out, and we're like, oh, uh, let's help him. There, let's, right? let's let's help this motherfucker. <laughs> but oh, uh, let bro, me skip because I mean, you're. Go ahead. You need it. You need it when you first get started in this fucking game, because your brain is gonna get molested for the rest of your life every single fucking day. Because you're gonna take <laughs> yeah. an L every day, every fucking day. I take an L every five fucking minutes, right? And so you got to be able to learn how to master that self image. And nobody yeah. talks about this shit. Nobody talks about, bro. You took an L. Someone quit. Okay, great. We just got on a couple new clients. All right. Well, this other thing hit the fan. Oh, guess what? This money's not coming in because it got delayed because of X. All of this other shit, bro. And so if you can match this self-image and all of this woo-woo shit that's not even woo-woo right now, your life will be so much easier. Well, I mean, just mastering not- yourself. Like mastering, like understanding yourself, what you want, how to get it, all that stuff. Cause right, like at any given moment, like, dude. There could be massive regulations on fucking wholesaling. There could be massive regulations on like any of the industries, right? Like you see it with like, you know, all of a sudden, like, you know, prop stream, they, they, they don't have MLS data, right? Or maybe, you know, who knows what's going to be around the corner in the next few years because we know that NAR is getting pissed at wholesalers. Oh, we know all this stuff, it might be coming around, right? But it's just like your business can blow up at any moment. Well, but it's what you build stream. along with you, right? What you build along with you. That's like, you know. That foundation you set for yourself is what allows, you know, like Stratton to be successful in multiple different verticals or Gene to move from vertical to vertical and, you know, build a successful business in that, right? Like, I guarantee you, you know, any of those two guys right there, if real estate all of a sudden was no longer a viability and all they had right now was, you know, just what they, you know, their mindset, skill set, whatever, like, it's so I'd be doing some that, crypto shit. If, yeah. if I was starting right now, I'd be yeah, doing crypto be as, crypto as fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was doing drones because drones were like just became commercially flyable. Uh, okay. That's why I got into that. I just didn't have my brain together to put like a scalable business. I built a local exactly. fucking services company. I had no idea I had anything else. But Bro, Zach, Zach, hit me up if you need help with anything, dude. Oh yeah, Zach and and Zach, uh, let me see what your profile picture is. You are uh, you you're He's a you're, drummer. You're, you're a drummer. So I'll tell you this right now, man. You're a drummer. I tell you this as a man to a man, and I'm sorry for any of you ladies that listen. But man, if you if you got the bug to build the business, 
or to be a business owner or to be an entrepreneur, if you are, if you felt this bug inside of you, you feel some kind of God's promise inside of you, God planted some seeds inside of you or universe or whatever you want to call it. And you feel those seeds inside of you, man, if you don't fucking let them grow. And, and the only thing way you can let them grow is to fucking pour sweat in those motherfuckers. If you don't let them grow, they're going to rot inside of you. And you got to fucking dude. your drummer right now. You're probably like in your twenties. In your 30s, you're going to feel so shitty about yourself. You're not even, like, you won't even be able to get laid. You won't even be able to get, walk in a room and feel good about yourself or, like, women around you because you're like, oh, shit, like, I'm not what I'm meant to be. I'm not, I fucking lost out on what I was meant to be. And that's just going to run side of you. You won't even be able to get laid, man. All that drummer shit, they won't even fuck you because you you need to, like, you, 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 you will only do it when, when you feel confident about yourself, man. And, like, Unless you're pulling, all, unless you're giving all you got, man. So I, I want to. I'm trying to scare you, all right? Be- because it's true. I started feeling it. That's why I fucking went into business. I'm like, shit. I'm 27. I've been feeling like I should build a business since I was like fucking 19, and I ain't fucking done it. What the fuck? I don't feel good about me. I don't feel fucking good about myself. You're like resentful. I'm, you're resentful yeah. of yourself, dude. Dude, 100. Yeah. percent Yep. And but even dude, and I went, I went fucking, I was homeless after fucking after IBM, dude. Just a few months after I quit my fucking job, like shit didn't go well. I was sleeping, I wasn't homeless. I was sleeping in the office, but like I had nothing to eat. I was sleeping in the office, and motherfucker, I felt so much fucking better about myself, even on that fucking couch, like hungry. I felt so much better about myself than I did when I was at a job, knowing I was at a job, no, and I knew that I should be building a business out there and not fucking working this dead ass job, even though the job by a lot of people, like it would be considered great, but like, it was just not mine. It was not for me. I felt much better hungry with $0 negative bank account on a fucking couch. I felt better about myself than I did when I was working a job. And guess what? Dude, one of those nights homeless be sleeping in the office. I walked out. And I fucking brought a chick in there, man. I got, I fucking, I fucking got it. Like I got the deal done, man. Even though I was broke and homeless, but because I felt so, I was so self confident because I knew I'm doing the right thing, even though I'm broke right now. And I know I, I'm kind of a, you know, my 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 metaphors are are a little bit uh, chauvinistic, you 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 may say, but uh, that's what it was, though. I just, dude, Zach, you gotta fucking. You gotta you gotta stick with one fucking thing, man. So yeah, thirty three, perfect, man. That's that's yeah, twenty seven to like thirty five. If you start feeling like something's wrong in in between those ages, you gotta act. You gotta act, and uh, yeah. And I and it's not even just for you. I hope that anybody that hears it, that's kind of like you know, dicking around trying to do a business and then not trying to do the business, um, either decide that it's for you or decide that it's not for you. But if it if you if you decided it's not for you and you quit, and then two days after you're like, fuck, I shouldn't have quit Go doing it, man. It's the best fucking feeling ever to build something um, when you know you were meant to build it. I, 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 I wake up with that shit every day. It's amazing. Gabriel is like, right. let's get some calls in. I agree. Yeah, Gabe, Mr. Get Money wants to get some calls. Sorry, Mr. Get Money. <laughs> get Money got to put us all back in our place. <laughs> Ooh, Liam, you're on mute, brother. I was just calling Donna back. Left her your voicemail, just letting her know that I wasn't going to be your buyer. So we can move on to the next one right now. Gene is the uh, czar of life advice. Dude has been one of the most motivating factors that I have. What? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Why is there a delay? Test, test. Hey, you're good, man. We can hear you. If it's okay. delayed, it's delayed. Our next lead is going to be in Dallas. Oh. Dallas, Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> Got you excited there for a moment. It's a two-bed, John, one-bed. congratulations. John just picked up his first lead. Hell yeah. There we go, man. It's in poor condition. 
The roof needs replacement. It needs flooring, bathrooms, plumbing, electrical. They want to sell ASAP, okay? Moving closer to family. There's no mortgage. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we get here. We're gonna get something good. I feel it. I feel it. Your call has been forwarded. Yo, we so Liam, guess what? We sold nine hundred clearance leads yesterday on a coupon code. Nine hundred. <laughs> they move Ooh. fast. Nine hundred. That's crazy. Y'all gotta up that coupon code. We, we got we got a pretty good strategy with them. Bummer. No answer. It's in the middle of nowhere. Nine hundred. Nine hundred fucking leads with one coupon code. It was a badass coupon code. Like people are getting leads for like three bucks. Bro, that is clearance. Sad. Clearance leads. You know they're they're older, but hey, bro, they three dollars for a lead. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right. Dude, yeah, like, <laughs> people, they get signed up and they get on the text email list. Literally, like I, I'm on the list. Deals all the time. Gene's the deal master. He 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 structures those all the time. But I mean, like, so many great leads for pretty ridiculous prices. That's insane, bro. That's dope. You guys bring so much fucking value. We just want people to see how good pay-per-click leads are. Give them some opportunities. And people are making deals happen off of them, too. People make deals happen all the time off of them. Just like this next call is going to be, we've got, it's going to be in Palm Bay, Florida. Okay. It's a three-bed, two-bath. It's in poor condition. Okay. Roof needs replacement, plumbing, electrical. It's vacant. They want to sell ASAP because of emergency reasons. They own the property and there's no mortgage. It's not listed. Love it. All right. How do these things go to clearance? Uh, they stay there for one week, I believe. One week and older, they go to clearance. So someone reads that and they say, no, I don't want that shit. Yep. No, clearance leads can, can some clearance leads have been bought before. They just weren't bought exclusively. Oh. Your call has been forwarded. Oh, I forgot their name. Susan. Susan. One conversation on the night is kind of tough. It's Monday. People generally don't pick up as well on Mondays. Tuesdays that's and Thursdays we, kill. But that's also because we shoot and shit today a little bit. We're getting back in the flow <laughs> of the show. We usually like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you're right. Your call has been <laughs> Damn. Just a reminder, guys, on the 26th, uh, RJ Bates is going to be going head to head with, um, oh man, who is it? Who is it? What's the name? Um, I think it's Nick. Yeah. Nick Luvano. Yep. It's Nick Luvano. And so Nick and RJ, they went head to head at the closest Olympics of 2020. And RJ just barely inched out, just barely inched out, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nick. And so, they're going to be going back head to head once again. Maybe, maybe it'll be a different result, but I don't know, man. I'd bet on RJ after seeing what he's been doing. All right. So next up, we got one in Huntsville, Alabama. Elizabeth, okay, two bed, 
No, a three bed, two bath. It's in poor condition, needs AC, appliances, flooring, bathrooms. It's vacant. They want to sell ASAP. Well, my voice just dried out right there. I need to get some water. Um, there's no mortgage. It's not listed. I don't know why people don't buy this one. Yeah, this is crazy, dude. Right? We're, These are we're, we're optimizing our feed a little bit because the lead, there's so many leads and some people can just miss them. So we're, we're hiring some consultants to optimize the way we we serve them up. Because, yeah, some, some things get missed unjustified. Miss Mac Properties. Miss Mac Properties. That's probably a wholesaler lead. And all on a lead, and it's a wholesaler, or it's under contract. It said, yes, I own this property. Oh. Let me try and FaceTime audio. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, hey, if the lead's under contract already, and it, and it said that it's not under contract, it's your full money back. We have a full off-market guarantee for every single lead. Hell yeah. If it says that it's off on off market and you call it and it's on the market, you're getting your money back. Just email oh, support it. at ispeedsleed.com. For sure. All right. I couldn't do the FaceTime audio thing. But next, we've got Brian in Ashland, Pennsylvania. We've got a three bed, one bath. It's in poor condition. They need AC, paint inside, paint outside, kitchen appliances, cabinets, flooring, bathrooms. It is vacant. They want to sell in four to five months because of financial reasons. Ooh, four to five months. Interesting. Okay. There's no mortgage. Okay. Well, I'll see why he wants to sell in four to five months. Is this Eugene? Yeah, I'm just showing the platform. This is Well, this is just the, the, the login page. Uh, we actually pulled out these the live leads onto the login page so people can see what they're getting into clearance leads do not have an off-market guarantee now uh no, already... they still they still do they still do, oh, do they never mind never mind they do for now yeah we're, we might okay. pull it but for now they do yeah. all right i mean you're gonna go back and you're gonna get a Please refund on three dollars Seven, five, <laughs> actually strat the point i actually want them to do it so they can experience our off your guarantee so when they buy leads for 500 dollars, they know that the guarantee works you can say a lot about gene but you can't say he's not a businessman Please leave your message for seven five seven five seven. Is this um Brian? My name is Liam. This is the platform. My website, cashofferoption.com. Uh, please give me a call back. I think I'd like to buy your house. Simple, simple, simple. But where it says um Facebook buy, is that a Facebook lead? Yeah. So we got yeah exactly. So we got. Uh, Facebook, we got Google ads, we got Google discovery ads, uh, cash offer option is the, our agency, which is basically the sole generator yeah. of leads for yeah. beats lead. But yeah, this is the lead source basically. Yeah. And, and quite frankly, Facebook has been like one-to-one -one with Google for contracts. What? Mm -hmm. It just has a longer follow-up period, right? Like, I mean, it's going to take On some an extra... Of them. On some of them, you're right. Yeah, I mean, on average, you can expect that a Facebook lead is going to take a little bit longer to close than a Google PPC, but the mm. ROI has been crazy from what we've seen. The sure. thing is, like, it's different here because you can actually see what you're buying. So it's not like you're just buying random Facebook lead. You're you buying. See. That's true. Because like we, you know when I mean? we ran Facebook ads, bro, everyone in the Central Valley, I know all the biggest investors, and no one can figure it out. Mm -hmm. well, they didn't have yes. us run their ads, which is such an excellent segue so that everybody knows that <laughs> if you want to generate leads without the middleman, you don't want to pay per lead. You want to have just a set budget. You want to get leads generated for you, right? Save some money on the cost per lead and just transfer it into a management fee, right? We will run your advertisements for you. All the expertise that we've generated over the last couple of years. I mean, we're putting 
right around five million a year through cash offer option. We know how to run ads super mm -hmm. well. So mm -hmm. you guys want to get plugged into that. There's going to be a link in the description that you guys can get to that with. Otherwise, I mean, it's all over the place. So get on that, get on the calendar. You guys are going to meet with me personally. We can run you through your options, what works well, what doesn't work, all that sort of stuff. So highly, highly recommend. But of course, I'm a little bit biased. Jeez, bro, that was fantastic. You need to take my money. That was great. <laughs> great segue, bro. The, the segue was where the money was there, right there. Bro, check this out. This is a Facebook lead right here. Fair condition, which fair means it's like one step above poor. Yep. AC needs repairs. Bathroom needs repairs. They want to sell it within the within a month. There's no mortgage. It's free and clear. You know, bro, I, mean? I don't care like, what anybody says. If anybody says their house is in fair condition, it's a deal. Unless they're <laughs> unreasonable, because they all fucking lie, anyways. Yeah, they do. Okay, this one we got one in Atlanta. Oh. Who was that? With Tango, Tango, bro, you got to get out of the strip club, man. I got a deal coming for you. Tell them to meet you at the strip club. That's probably yeah. There we go. Okay. Hey, you know what? I will be at this address to buy your house. Okay. The, bad, there's one only bad. one requirement before we're doing business with us. Are you okay? Are you okay if we we can only meet in one place? I'm sorry, but you have to be okay with right it. <laughs> we have to meet at the strip club. I'm sorry. All right. All right. So no immediate. So apparently, the, the, we need to get flooring. Okay. So when I searched fair, why did Lee, have you ever seen pink money? Pink money? Yo, With yeah, girl on it? Yeah, man, I did when I was in um when I was in Poland. Oh really? Well, that's, yeah. that's interesting. Let's see. Look at that. Pink money with a girl on it. That's welcome to Ukraine. <laughs> Dude, so when I was in Poland, my girl and I, um, we were looking for like a CBD shop that sells more than CBD. Dude, Everett is like, now nah, if you want it, you gotta go across the border to Ukraine. I'm like okay, and it ain't great here for as far as weed goes. <laughs> Maybe on that side of Ukraine, where that's closer to Poland, it's a little better. Poland seems really progressive, at least where I was. I thought they'd have it. Oh, they're, they're so very, very uh, not to be generalizing, but very Catholic in Poland. It, it's weird. I mean, just the town I was at, you know, Krakow, right in the heart of Old Town, right? Like, yeah, have you ever been to Wawel Castle? I ain't never yeah. been to Krakow. Krakow. Oh, dude, yeah. Right in the heart of Old Town. It was cool there. One of the coolest places I've ever been to. Let's call it Diedrich. Liam, how long do you close leads every night? You do this every night and you close for two hours? Try to. We've we've been really slacking this last month. Oh, yeah. yeah we, we started off, we were doing like six hours per night every night. Fucking crazy. Yeah. Burned ourselves out a little bit. We did that for like two weeks straight. Yo, that's what it takes. I fucking love it. Such good practice, though. Oh, dude. I'm about to get kicked out of this bar. <laughs> it's 2, <laughs> 2 a.m. Hello? Okay. No answer. Well, guys, here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking right now. It's 6 o'clock. I know we did a lot of shooting the shit tonight, but, like, we're just getting back into the swing of things. Here's what I can How about promise. a private stock lead? How about a, a private, private stock, stock lead? Yes. Okay, there we go. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. This is going to be a fresh lead right off the website, highly motivated, ready to rock. I mean, this is going to be 
a pretty fire thing. But in the meantime, while Gene's getting that pulled up, you guys will see this little banner down below here that Gene put up. The winning mastermind. You guys got to go to it. It's in Utah. So first off, Gene's going to be there. Wrong time. Gene's going to be there. You guys got to show up for that alone, right? I mean, who doesn't want to meet Gene? He's got like an array of about 30 different hats. It's kind of like a Pokemon. Which a lot of people get. don't want to meet me. You're going to get the, the, the boss hat. Face doesn't want to meet me. Yeah, Face doesn't want to meet me. I'll meet him and uh, I'll meet him and Cali, dude. Face but, Barbie, uh, what's going on? <laughs> dude, it's like a rare collectible Pokemon card with the uh, with Gene. Which hats he gonna be wearing? He's gonna be wearing the Speed to Lead hat. Is he gonna be wearing the Cowboys hat? Is he gonna be wearing the uh, the Boston hat? I mean, so you gotta collect them all at different events. So first off, that's gonna be the biggest draw. But second, like. Guys, this is going to be the greatest event if you want to learn marketing for your business across any channel, right? You're going to have people who are going to be teaching Facebook marketing, Instagram, social media marketing, right? I mean, Stratton's got a social media agency that I'm sure they're going to be talking about and how it helps scale businesses, how to scale your business in all different ways. And I mean, I'm sure Stratton can add on a ton of extra cool stuff about that. Oh, bro. I mean, so we got that and we got real estate. One of my mm -hmm. business partners in our real estate company did a million dollars net last year in JVs alone. Fuck. Another one of our, our speakers makes $50,000 a month in, in Airbnb revenue. Like, no, sorry, not revenue. Net to him, $50,000 a month. Started two years ago. Fucking bananas. Um, we have Gene coming. We have Scott coming. Scott Morris with Lamsu Leads, who is, I think, an amazing salesman, amazing um, leader. Like, he's a fucking savage at it. Um, I own a cold calling company and VA staffing company. I own my own wholesaling company. Um, who, what other people we have? We have another dude who flips 30 houses a year, 30 to 40. He owns a brokerage and a lending company. Another dude is going to talk about infinite banking. And so, I mean, yeah, we will talk about marketing and like social and everything else, but the easiest way to get deals besides doing this, right. Is talking on Facebook and saying, and like connecting the dots. And the number one way to do that is it's like Instagram and Facebook, dude. We made and the number one way to learn that. Babies. The number one way to learn that is to go to the winning mastermind. Right? And we'll show you how to do cold calling, PPC, direct mail. Yep. But I mean, you want free. I think everybody needs free shit in their business. Everybody's happy when they get free shit. Free shit is social. That's just my opinion. And you get direct just access for them for two days. We're going to go rent out some top golf stuff, go race some go karts. And you get whatever questions you want to get asked, you can ask them for 12 days. We're going to limit it to 20 people. So you get direct access to all the speakers for the full two days. What? Like, Dude. It, that's... It'll be an Airbnb. It'll be pretty dope. No, that's – oh, that that's – way okay, so it's not just some event. You're going to go out. You're going to you know, get a – fuck, man. I want to come and raise Gene in a go-kart. <laughs> <laughs> I would eat his ass alive. Fuck. Yeah, man. Smaller – I I don't know, man. I might I, I I fight dirty. I might I might shoot Dude, at you. You you hear me drive shoot go, we're talking this is in bumper cars, man. It's shooting. I don't know what you guys got going on in Ukraine. I mean, I know your guys' police are wild out there, but this is go car, man. You hear me driving in my Lexus? <laughs> but it should be I'm excited, bro. I think it should be dope. Dude, how uh, do people get into it? Send me a DM on Instagram. Send me a DM on Facebook. I don't know if my Facebook's on here. Um, well, let me get this little banner out of the way so that yeah, man, it's such a it's such a tight it's such a tight knit event, man. That's that's why I'm excited. Right, that's what, I wanted it to be super tight knit, so everyone could like. I want you to get access to the speakers to be able to ask them like, how did you get there? What are you currently doing in your business? What's working for you? Like, what are you seeing? Because like the hard part when you go to those events, you don't get access to really the speakers. And if you do, it's like a five minute conversation. Like here, you're going to be like, after the event, we're all going to go drink and you're going to get to ask them all the questions that you want, right? Like, we'll shut you off if you're being ignorant about something and like being annoying. But like, bro, like, I want you to come here and learn and like really suck from. I mean, we got eight figure entrepreneurs coming. Like, they have eight figures recurring. Like, bad. This is just a, I'm this is just a homie hangout session right there. I mean, yeah, homie hangout, pretty much. Homie hangout. One thing that I failed to realize is that all like these massive business owners are, there's homies. Dude, they're so chill. Everybody, everybody that I've met that like, dude, the people that like play real estate investor, 
right? And they put on their suit to seem, you know, official and, they, you know, like all this stuff, like they're not the people really doing business, man. Like all the people really doing business are the coolest, just most chill guys, all of them that I met. Some oh. of them are a little, are, are a little ignorant of what's going on around them, but. Dalton. Um, actually, I'll just throw my phone number on here. Um, 801-860-8032. Eight zero one eight six zero, and Gene put it out. Okay, I was doing the same thing. Gene, you're slamming Shouldn't down drinks attacked. over there, man, and you're you're doing better than I am. Just two drinks, two hundred grams of rum. They measure that shit in grams. It's fucking weird. This is the welcome to Eastern Europe. They measure drinks in grams. You're like, how many grams do you want? Fifty or a hundred? Like a hundred. Really? That's 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 literally how how shit is. Like, you order rum. Like rum, rum and coke, right? I order them separate, coke separate, rum separate, ice separate, and then uh, and then they're like, you want fifty or a hundred or two hundred? That's how they serve drinks around here. Man. <laughs> you want fifty grams, one hundred grams, two hundred grams? Are you in the hilarious. Ukraine right now? I am, yeah. But what is your fucking sleep schedule like? Oh, dude, fucking! I don't go to bed until I'm. I, I tell you this, I don't. I don't go to bed. Right, right now, my sleep schedule, I'll tell you exactly what it is, Trad. Until we hit eight grand for the day, I'm not going to bed. What are you doing to pull the lever that makes that happen? A couple of things. Okay. A couple of three. As, as long as three, it's rational. A couple of three things. <laughs> no, no, as long as you're not it, fucking sitting there. No, no. I mean, it, uh, well, obviously, I'm not stupid. So, so, so that's like a, that's been a. <laughs> <laughs> that's been a more, that's been a more or less normal thing. So so it's not like it's like hard. Sometimes we gotta like inch up there a little bit. Like t- today we might have to. We're not generating. We're generating a little bit of low volume today. So it's 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 gonna be tough to get to fucking to uh, to eight today. But we're at, we're at five. We're at fifty eight hundred for the day. We got five hours left in Eastern time schedule. I think w- we might get to eight. Um, but you don't, you but yeah, Gene, Gene's sleep schedule when we first started the show and we were running it till like 8 9 p.m. central time every night, we were running it for like literally like 5 p.m. till 9, like four hours at least a day. Um, and Gene was staying up to like 5 6 a.m. every day, like he was falling asleep on the stream. Dude, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a clip of that. Yeah, yeah, he's like, I left the stream because I had to go to an so appointment. Small. Yeah, oh my yeah. god, it's it's out there. It's out there on yeah. YouTube. You can hear me yep. snoring, man. And it's, it's literally just hilarious. in the back. What? Yeah, he's just in the back. Yeah. But man, dude, sleep deprived gene is not a gene you want to meet. Dude, he kicked me off the show for a day because he was just getting upset about everything. <laughs> it was for a re- it was for a decent reason. It was maybe not. Maybe actually it wasn't. It was I was yeah. You were a little cranky, dude. That, that was like, bro, just take a break from the show for a few days, man. Like, get your damn rest. Dude, Gene came back, totally different dude. He came back. He was so well. He was like, hey, guys. We're like, you smiling? What happened? <laughs> dude, it's embar- that's embarrassing, man. I, I... It happens. It happens. It You're happens. a hustle. But I mean, that's it. You're a hustler. But it's funny, man. It's, fun- it's some funny shit. But no, sleep schedule, bro, I... I honestly try and like, dude. Um, since my daughter was born, I've been I've been much more conscious of, of. Uh, it's weird because I've been much more conscious about like, doing really well, so I can then, when she starts being having like a conscious age, when she can remember herself, I can actually be there more, and not I, be working all the time. I was on that same page. Like I, when I first had my son. I took him everywhere with me. Like I door knocked holding my son in a fucking like car seat. Right. But then I was like, I'm going to work nonstop. This motherfucker's not going to remember this shit anyways. And so now, I mean, still I work. It, it was a fallacy is what I thought. I didn't get as far as I wanted to in that amount of time, but you're a lot older than me and you're a lot farther along in business. But like I, cause I did it and then it was hard to fucking undo the habit. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the hardest part, right? Because you program yourself to be a fucking savage. And then here you are. Now they're four. 
all right, all right, you're coming with me, motherfucker. Let's go. Or I gotta go drop him off a Dega. And how old is he now? Four? He's he's four now. That's dude, that's yeah, how old are you, bro? Twenty six. Damn, man, nice. How was it having a kid at twenty two, man? I feel so unprepared. I mean, I would, I, I would. Oh, unprepared as fuck. I'm still unprepared. I call, yeah. <laughs> I call my son my guy. I was like, "What's going on, my guy?" And I mean, I try and be the best father possible, right? But I don't. But I don't think anybody's ever really ready to be a parent, dude. Yeah, but it, no, it gives you that. a kick in your ass. Like it puts a lot of things into perspective. I don't think I would be oh, as yeah. successful as I am now unless I had my kid. Like it. But it's at this point, it's a really, really hard dichotomy to manage just because, like, you want to spend as much time being a good parent as possible. But I, I want to work all the time. And don't get me wrong, like, even though we're shooting the shit, like, this is work. Like, I'll do this, I'll make more money, my yeah. brand will grow. But this is still time away from the kid, you know, like, time away from the kid, time away from the girlfriend. But having the kid oh, at 22 was shocking. Yeah, that's a good word. Shocking. I mean, at a point in time, me and my son were homeless. Like, it was me and him for the first, like, two years. Only me and him, and then we were wow. home. Wow. Meteoric grinds. But you guys heard it here first. The best business advice you can have is have a child. It'll make you do better. Fuck I think no. so. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It depends, though. It depends. If you've got a team of people already, I think it was the best thing for me. She's cute, uh, too, man. I can't imagine... Dude, I can't imagine doing uh, at the beginning. Her, yeah, I, I, I got to take my hat off to people that have had had kids before they before they knew before you have like some type of scale before they made it like in a way that where you can't get fucking you're not going to go hungry. Yeah, I dude. take my hat off. I take my hat. I've never done it. And obviously now I don't, we'll never get to do that. But that's that's crazy. Shit. Bananas and rice. That's why when people tell me like they're broke and they don't have any money for marketing, I sold everything I had to pay rent, and then I had to go donate plasma to get money for marketing for wholesale. And people are like, "Oh, I can't afford anything." Like, bro, fuck you. Like, if you really want it bad enough, you can do it. Like, I've had to get rid of everything, and then me and my son ate bananas and rice and spam for months at a time. Shit. Well, I don't plan on having a kid in uh, Wrap it up. Wrap it up. quite a while. All right. I, I got time for one more call, then I got another meeting. This Sounds is the good, longest bro. time I've ever been alive. And I'm getting kicked out of the bar. Yep, yep. The girl's right, like, can, We can got the, uh, that private chat lead here. <laughs> the private stock. We're going to see how it goes. Hello, Ms. Donna. Yes. Donna, my name is Liam. Uh, you filled out my website, cashofferoption.com. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. Well, perfect. Are you still looking to get that home sold? Uh, Different yeah. Donna. What's your offer? Well, I'm not quite sure yet. That is a good question. I just need to get a couple of questions answered about the property. Can you do that for me? I can. Well, perfect. Could you just catch me up to speed about anything that you think might be notable? Ground pool, brand new as of 2020, okay. one liner anyway. Uh-huh. A shed in the back. Okay. Uh, 12 by 14, I believe. A new roof, a new air conditioner, new windows. All of them are replaced with the hurricane windows except three on the sides. Did you get hit by a hurricane? Oh, hell no. No, no. Wow, so you just, just decided uh, just to rebuild the house. You, you know. nice. It's a big thing in Florida. Yep, I'm sure. Okay. You get brownie points for it, I guess, on your insurance. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, insurance <laughs> likes that. Well, I haven't then, gotten them yet, so when, I'm not sure. <laughs> when, you, uh, when you do get hit by the hurricane, they don't want to have to pay for all that stuff. Uh, well... It's not that they don't have to pay for it. They just give you a benefit on your taxes. Sure. I mean, your pay, uh, premiums for your homeowners. Sure, I see what you're saying. Okay. Now, how about yeah, stuff on the inside? Gimmick. Does the you know kitchen look good? The bathroom? How's all that stuff? Uh, the bathroom was just remodeled year before last. Well, it and sounds like 
It's a little fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds it like your house is. Other than that, it's fine. Sounds like your house is in really good shape. It is fairly well. Yeah. Okay. So, what's guy you looking for a cash offer rather than taking it to market? Um, well, I was just curious as to how much you were offering. Mm -hmm. How much were you looking for so for I it? You really to just. Get it for the hassle. 165. <laughs> 165. Well, I'm pulling up all my numbers right here. What's got you looking to move? Uh, we found a place we want. Ah, so you got to get this one sold to buy it? <laughs> well, no, my daughter will actually, actually want it. So uh -huh. I'm just wondering which is the best way to go because she has no money. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> so you're going to be the bankroll. Right. Oh, no. At least it is. It must be a really nice place, then. It, it's nice enough. It, mm -hmm. It's above average in our neighborhood. So is is it nearby you? Uh, there are several of them. It's a whole subdivision. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that sounds like a good move. When is the time frame for that? For what the moving? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. Whenever we close on the place. Sure. So you guys have already got. Oh, how exciting. It's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, it is. So I'm assuming then you're working with an agent on that, right? With who? You're working with an agent on getting that home bought, correct? Yes. Good. That's yes. the safe route for sure. Well, I'm looking at your house here, and I mean, it looks gorgeous. I like the tree that you've got right in that front yard. Oh, magnolia. How beautiful. Thank I mean, you. I'll be honest with you, Donna. I don't think a cash offer is going to be your best option. And the reason why Probably is, <laughs> yeah, you, like when you're talking about mitigating that hassle, right? The hassle, it, like, a cash offer, let me just explain it to you from the investor mindset. I either need it at enough of a discount to where it makes sense to where if I want to resell it on the open market, right? If I wanted to do that then I would come in, I would need enough of a discount to pretty much make a profit. And then also, you know, pay my realtor to list it and get all the photos taken and do all the marketing for it and all that stuff, right? That's the discount that you're taking for convenience, which, you know, would be at least $10,000 off of um, whatever we're looking for. And so- You're asking 200,000 for all of them in here, right at it. The numbers that so what it looks like to me is that the property is probably worth like right around like 185 right yeah and so just given that like at 185 if you want 160 with the realtor fees closing costs all that stuff at the end of the day at 160 it just doesn't really make sense for an investor to put the time money and effort into it you see what i'm saying yeah and so i mean just based off of that like the investor mindset there needs to do you have any idea of what it could rent out for perhaps uh, no. 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 Numbers in the area range between like 14 or 15. Yeah. And so like the general rule of thumb, it's called the 1% rule, where if I'm going to be buying a rental in your area, I need to be getting 1% of my purchase price every single right. month. Right. So with that, the rents in your area around 1450 to 1500 a month. So that means I would need to buy it at 150 at the absolute most. And I just, ex yeah, I, I mean, would you be willing to go for that price? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to take some talk to my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, he was thinking about it. That was the offer that he got before. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what he decided to do on it, but he's not home right now. So I could probably call you back tomorrow. I or mean, you could call me at this time tomorrow night. Yeah, sure. I'll definitely do that just so you can get a follow-up for you. I mean, what's the headache with listing your property? I'm sure that the agent you're looking to buy the house with has tried to talk you into selling it with them, right? Well, no, no. My daughter wants to buy it. So we would hold a mortgage on it. So the, the, the one you're looking to buy, right? Separate from that, this one that you're looking to sell, um... I'm sure that your agent has wanted to sell this house for you, right? Oh, yeah. She's offered to list it, but my daughter asked me not to. Why? Because she wants to. And she can't, go, she can't get the credit, so I'll have to hold the mortgage. So what you're looking for for this, the one that you're selling right now, 
if I gave you a cash offer, I would want to buy that for myself, right? Right. So what is what are you proposing here? How would your daughter get that? Well, my daughter will make monthly payments. That's all she can do. Uh-huh. So that's what we had planned to do is just let her take it over. So we so, just thought at a time uh -huh. well, we may still have to do it, but right now we don't have to. So, you I, know. I'm a little confused here. So... Your your daughter wants. Well, we were going to use the money uh -huh. to buy a new home. Yep. But now we don't have to use that money, so we aren't in any hurry to sell it. Gotcha. Are Are you living in there right now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it works. <laughs> so, if if I bought it cash today, right? Uh huh. How does your daughter fit into that picture? Okay. We could we sell it to her. I see. So, yeah. Okay. But we're offering her a deal to just make monthly payments. Oh, and keep it up and I make see. Sure everything gets fixed. But when you put it on the market, then it's a bigger commitment, and then your daughter's going to be pissed at you. Right. Oh. Uh, she doesn't really, she has no say in it. Really. Sure. Okay. I was just helping her. I see what you're saying. Well, Donna, listen, here's my best recommendation to you is just for me personally, the convenience of selling it with a cash offer is not worth $35,000. If no, you think it is for really. you, then, you know, we can make it work at one fifty. I'm sure. But yeah. um, otherwise, just well, take it to market. Before, I think, yeah. He wouldn't do it, but I don't know because I haven't talked to him about it lately. <laughs> Listen, just make just take it to market, get your offer done that way. That that'll be your best bet to get the get the highest and best. Otherwise, you know, I'll reach I'll reach back out to you in a month or so because we do buy properties in a way which you would still hold the mortgage and we can make payments to you and all that stuff. Then we could probably rent it out to your daughter and then she could become our tenant buyer and she could pay us and she wouldn't have to qualify for any credit yet. So that's a way we could do it too, but that would be um where we would buy the, buy we would buy it from you, and we would make monthly payments to you. And then what we would do is we would own the house, so you can walk away and you can use the uh, lien that we've given you pretty much, or that you've given us technically to go buy your next house. Um, and then what you can do is, or what I would do then is I would How rent. Would you charge her rent because we were only charging her a thousand dollars a month. It would be significantly more than that. Yeah, I figured. Mm -hmm. She can't do it. That's why we were helping her. That makes sense. She has three kids at home. So. Wow. Well, that sounds like a tough situation then, yeah. Yeah. Um, but if she gets behind, I'll call you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. Do I don't want to be the one held over her head. I'm gonna call Liam. I'm gonna call Liam. I'd, I'd rather you you yell at her than me. <laughs> Hey, Donna's kid. I'm the one who wants to buy the house. Pay up. All right? Okay. If you don't, I will. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Donna, you're so pleasant. I hope you have a lovely rest of your night. I just don't think we're a good fit. Why, well, thank you so much. Of course. You have a safe one. Bye-bye now. You too. Bye-bye. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, the motivation there just isn't isn't where it needs to be to get that deal done. Hey, but Stratton, Gene had to leave to get kicked out of the bar. But thank you so much, Stratton. I appreciate it, my friend. You were great of today. Course, you, you, you dropped some killer advice. Gene, he left a parting message in the chat. He said, can't wait to kick it in Utah, which is going to be an exciting time for you guys. Make sure you guys all reach out to Stratton on Instagram. You guys can all get into his mastermind. It'll be worth it. I, actually, not all you guys. I mean, there's like, what, 20 slots, he said. Yeah, there's only 20 spots. Okay. Um, but, bro, you're a fucking savage. I don't know. I haven't heard about you before. You fucking killed it. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it, man. Oh yeah, bro. And you're a great guy. Thank you so much hey, for yeah, having me on, dude. Absolutely. Hey, you have a really wonderful night and everybody else here too. I'm just going to do the closing ad real here. And we're probably gonna be live back again tomorrow because we got to get back in the swing of things. But uh, have a good night, everybody. See you. Are you looking to implement pay-per-click advertising into your real estate business? Ispeedthelead.com is an a la carte PPC marketplace allowing investors to get into the world of PPC on a budget. Browse and purchase PPC leads a la carte from all around the United States. These leads are from motivated sellers who want to sell now. 
So if you want to find motivated sellers using PPC, go to highspeedelite.com. We got you.